Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the world of the International Fab Talks. Fab Talks is all about connecting with different people across the world and across India as well, because India is one beautiful country with several states and several wonderful people who are good at heart, and they have a wonderful exposure to various kinds of experiences and various cultures as well. So let's welcome today our celebrity who's here with us with a lot of experience and exposure. He has been through a lot of ups and downs. So let's get to know his story, celebrate his journey today on the International Fab Talks. Join us, friends, to welcome our celebrity and guest. He's Mr. P. V. Giridhara Rao. He's joining us all the way from a lovely city, Hyderabad, which is located in Telangana. Telangana is in India for the people who are out of India and you don't know this beautiful place called as Hyderabad. So let's enjoy the beautiful day with sir and get to know more about his life, how he has achieved all that he has achieved till date, the ups and downs that he would have faced or he might be facing still because none of us are free or devoid of problems. This is what I want to make it very clear to the youth to understand that life is a pinch of bitterness and as well as sweetness. Let's get now uh, a chance to understand sir's thoughts and his views on various aspects with regard to his professional and personal life as well. Thank you so much, sir, for being here with us. Thank you for being polite, humble, accommodating. Thank you so much. And you're a person I come across like, uh, I've seen that you're egoless, you're able to connect with people and that makes you extra special when you're really able to accommodate others in your lives for the right reasons. So I see you as a wonderful gentleman. Thank you so much for accepting the invitation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. With your permission, I go ahead and I share your profile and then we begin the session. Please. Thank you, sir. My dear friends, it's time now to introduce our guest in an official way. Allow me to share sir's profile. It's, it's a responsibility and a honor as well. Uh, Mr. P. V. Giridhara Rao is the head of the emerging markets of the Central European region. And uh, he's connected with MSN Laboratories. I'd like to add more to sir's profile if I could put it in the right way. So always travels frequently and he's been recently you know, returning from Moscow, Russia. And he's connected with international sales and marketing. Uh, this career he started in the year 1995. He's almost uh, close to 40 years into this beautiful journey of pharma marketing. He's completed 37 plus years. And he started his career in the year 1987 at Seoul Pharmaceuticals as a medical representative. He climbed the corporate ladder, worked in different roles, and now he is the head of the emerging markets, which is connected with Central and Eastern Europe regions uh, at MSN Laboratories, as I earlier mentioned. And he had the opportunity to work with over 50 nationals from different countries. They were his team members, and he attributes his success today to his entire team and his mentors. That's really nice. A person, you know, the, as I earlier mentioned in the beginning, He's a person who could connect with you very nicely. He could bond with you very well. So connecting with different people from different nationalities has given him a wide exposure and he contributes his success to his team and mentors. Let's get to know who his mentors are as the session goes on. He has a rich experience working for the right cause because the medical representative zone is not an easy one. It's quite a tough one. So being there, connecting with different types of customers or maybe trying to meet different types of doctors enabling them to understand your product that you're out there to you know market it really requires lots of grit and determination nevertheless sir loves to work with young people energetic minds and communicate with regard to healthcare and with all the healthcare professionals he finds great joy connecting with the youngsters and those people connected with the healthcare prof profession. That's really nice because, you know, our health is of prime importance. If your health is not good, they say health is well. So that's it. Now, sir is also very passionate about his work. And this passion leads him to do more and more in a very productive manner. He's very hardworking and he gets inspiration from one and all. Let's get to know more about it. And, you know, his team motor, the motor of his team, or this goes... You know, in a very positive way, he says this, my team's motto is passion to perform. So when you have the passion to do what is right and to do it with a group of people or maybe connected with other individuals, you really succeed in the right way. And he's a lovely family person as well. He has a caring wife. That's how he describes his family life. He has two wonderful sons. Uh, one of them is a pharmacist and the younger one, he's completed his MBA 
that is connected with marketing, fulfilling Sir's dream. So such a sweet and a beautiful profile to share and get to know more about his life journey, how he's able to balance the professional space and personal space. His family is happy with him. He's also very happy on the work zone. Let's get to know how we could do it, how you could do it in your profession as well. Hello, sir. And thank you so much for being here with us. It's really a pleasure to have you share your experiences. There will be several people, especially the people known to you, very close to you. They will not know many things about you. They would want you to explain and describe yourself for all of them. The people who are known to us and unknown as well. So I would like you to answer this question. How would you define the real Giridhara Rao? Thank you very much uh, for having me on the show. And uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to explain and uh, tell myself about to, to, to the people. Uh, young people especially. And uh, you want me to describe uh, me as Giridhar Rao. Uh, I'm a basically from a middle class family. My father was a, a government employee in uh, Andhra Pradesh. <clears throat> and uh, I have a lot of responsibilities when I just completed my graduation. And uh, there was, the boom was started coming up for computers. I've done my computer diploma, but there was no jobs at that time. So, it was a compelling reason I need to join as a medical man. But it took only six months time for me to decide I need to continue in this profession. I never looked back. That six months was a period where I was just in a dilemma. From there on, I, I just climbed the ladder today. And uh, as I told you earlier also, and you told, I attribute this success to my team and my mentors uh, who are all with me. And they helped me to grow. Uh, to this position today and uh, today the journey is beautiful because I started from India marketing uh, for six years then I moved international today I would have been traveled to more than 70 countries and I would have seen uh, many markets many people many cultures and I keep traveling if I don't travel I feel very uneasy and if I don't uh, go to the field and meet the professionals I'm feeling uneasy. I'm very uncomfortable in office, very comfortable in the market. That's how I describe myself. Wonderful, sir. That's very nice. Thank you so much for sharing. As you mentioned, the early uh, years of your career, the first six months was a tough period, but that nevertheless, you continued your journey and you are a success today. You've been traveling across 70 countries. You love meeting people for the right reasons with regard to your profession. That's really nice. Very inspiring. Because we feel nowadays when we see the youngsters, they just enter into a professional zone and then they look back. They say, no, it's not my cup of tea. They're not ready to take the risk. They're not ready to, you know, put forth their hard work or maybe or maybe be positive. In future, maybe they would be okay with the particular profession they have chosen. So you're a good example for many of the youngsters. You said there was no looking back after six months and that has created a beautiful life for you. Now, sir, but during those six months, your initial stage when you joined in as a medical rep, where was it? Was it in Hyderabad or some other part of India? It is actually from coastal Andhra Pradesh. Uh, the mm, is a district called Prakasham district. Uh, the headquarters is called Ongol, a uh, very small town, but it is a district headquarters. I started from there and uh, that is a very small place. Yes, sir. on goal in Prakasham district, I get that. It's not, I think the present Andhra Pradesh, is it? Yes, present Andhra Pradesh. Yes, absolutely. Right, right. And you're very honest enough to tell us that you come from a very humble background from a middle class family. You had a lot of responsibilities and then that made you stronger. When we face a lot of you know tough times during the early stages of life, that gives us a lot of resilience power to face more in future. That's really absolutely. nice. Now, sir, when you began to, you know, began this journey and began to meet different people from different nationalities, then how was that beautiful connection? Like, did you find it very difficult to connect with people of different languages and, you know, different personalities? You never know what's in their mind. So how did you decode all of that and connect with over 70, uh, you know, nationality? I mean, 70 countries you've traveled. How did you do all of this? Oh, this is... Um... Uh, started uh, with my first uh, the journey started from Russia only in 1985. Uh, actually, when I started my career in India, I was in uh, my own goal. Then I moved to Karnataka for a brief period. And uh, then I was elevated as a frontline. Then I moved to 
as regional manager for Karnataka and Goa. And again, within one year, I was the youngest uh, uh, team member to be promoted uh, at the age of uh, 26. Uh, I, I was in a position ladder. I became a country manager for Russia. And I went, I went to Russia by my perception of Russia was, you know, like any other people, people were standing in a queue for bread and uh, that was like kind of perception. But I went to country. It is amazing country, beautiful country. Everything is large. And my perception has changed. And when I met the people, people looks very rude and uh, straightforward, but very, very sensitive. And uh, they're very emotional. Only thing is you need to get connect with them. And of course, language is a barrier. And uh, I took six months time to learn the language. Today I can speak Russian. And uh, by, that's the reason I, I very, I'm very comfortable talking to them. I still love to talk uh, Russian. And, uh, but when I start moving uh, from there on to other countries, and uh, one thing I stopped doing, comparison. Don't compare any country with any country. And many, many people ask, which is your most liked country? I said, every country is beautiful. All people are very, very beautiful. First thing I do to, when I go to a country, I don't compare anything with them. Any, because I like to understand their culture, their behavior, and uh, their society. And then that makes everything beautiful. And uh, you need to only be sensitive towards the people and understand them be empathetic and they get connected very easy. And uh, language is, uh, of course, sometimes become a barrier. But what I try to do is a small, small words I try to pick up and um, say uh, in Spanish and I go, merci, then I tell them hola, gracias, muchas gracias. A small, small words, no, thank you, thank you very much. These kind of words I pick up and talk and they love it. When you talk, start attempting to their language, and the way we, they behave. And third one is um, many people who travel outside India, they prefer to eat only Indian food, but I don't prefer. I prefer to eat their own food. I try to try their de delicacies, their food, and they like it. Otherwise, you know, you go and search for Indian food in a foreign land, and uh, that makes the other people uncomfortable. Maybe you are comfortable. And these are the few uh, tricks that I, Lord, I say, uh, I adopt myself very quickly with them. And today I have good friends, good colleagues. Still they are in touch with me in, in my previous organizations when I work. And uh, whenever I go till today, my team members you know, love to talk to me, meet me. And it's a great uh, thing. You know, whenever I go to a country, it's, I, it's the love and affection I get from the team. Wonderful, wonderful. So that's really nice. And what I like about your thought process is you're a progressive thinker as you don't want to compare any country. All countries are unique and you respect their culture. You respect the cuisine as well, the food as well. You're not very fussy regarding food. And you also picked up the language a little such so that you could connect with them. You could, you know, talk to them in the right way, you know, get along with them in the right way. That's really nice. Now, sir, that's a very positive thing that you've shared. But you might have had even certain negative uh, you know, experiences to maybe some difficult experiences, if you could put that, if you could share any one of them, the toughest experience while traveling across uh, the world with regard to your profession till date, that is still in your mind. Uh, uh, professionally, I uh, uh, I didn't have a very tough situations, but uh, maybe some difficult situations in terms of, uh, you know, meeting uh, some of the, the healthcare professionals, distributors, uh, certain crisis which uh, happens in day-to-day -day life, especially uh, I represent emerging markets. So that means uh, the markets from Latin America, Africa, Asia, Middle East, North Africa, and CIS, Russia, and Central and Eastern Europe. These are all my uh, territory. But what happens in, they are all volatile countries uh, in terms of, you know, political and many situations keep happening. Uh, that then we need to face them and uh, approach them in a way uh, very professionally. But I, I, I will not say, you know, very critical situation, some kind of, you know, uh, professional difficulties, you know, to solve certain issues at the distributor, Ministry of Health, and uh, some registration issues which happens in many country by country. But uh, we attempted very nicely 
professionally it helped but when it have prof when personally some of the situations have happened to me in uh, especially in russia and ca is and uh, because there you know some of the situations where people don't like foreigners uh, to come and grab their jobs and some of the youngsters uh, one or two times uh, they have attacked me and uh, I, i i could escape one of my my colleagues got injured in the, the situation and uh, this kind of you know small small incidents happens um, in a country and we need to be very careful at the same time uh, we do we should not venture into any of the uh, uh, activities there you work come back and stay back yourself that is one of the safe way to do many people have many experiences and one of the worst uh, not experience one of the situation which i have seen one of my colleague who was in kenya and uh, he was in a mall with his family attacked by a terrorist and he lost his life and uh, this kind of situations i when you hear you know then it, it, people feel very bad about it and uh, but uh, touch wood uh, you know uh, my team has taken care of me and uh, we have uh, gone through uh, situations and we have um, adopted ourselves to each country and we know where to go where not to go and where to venture and uh, and if you ask me some place if you are in 70 countries believe me many countries i have not seen the sightseeing places of those countries many countries i have not there because work come back and take care of your self i would have seen some countries more than 20 times and uh, but you know still i have not gone to the one of the famous sightseeing places uh, that that requires because uh, we on a we, we, we went for a work and not for a sightseeing like that at the same time that is also a wide river risk factors yes sir thank you for sharing all of that you know and i was like shivering from inside when you were sharing like this so and so happened like it's quite scary sometimes but yes you've been quite lucky to date and you're a brave person that's really nice that's wonderful so and you're very honest when you've shared this you know there are certain people who will hold back the sensitive information you've shared it like you know you're enlightening others you're creating awareness how to carry carry their journey forward like complete your work and come back no need to indulge in other activities or don't waste your time for sightseeing unnecessary you connected to your work that's a good message that's wonderful now sir you connected to something called as passion to perform that is the motto of your team now when did this passion to perform begin did it begin as a child or once you became a professional <clears throat> Uh, once i became a professional and, uh, but i didn't realize you know till i came into uh, the um, international marketing uh, i used to work hard uh, i'm not very intelligent but uh, i compensate uh, intelligent people by working very hard and uh, when i started working in international marketing it actually this theme has uh, come through for discussion with my team member in Nairobi Kenya when we were discussing actually we are deriving a theme for our uh, team and every year we used to do some theme but suddenly one of the theme came passion to perform what we realized is passion is emotion and uh, passion cannot be created and passion has to come within yourself so uh, for any performance passion is very important and you may push people you may pull people and you may drag people to do certain performances but you know without passion that is not fruitful so that that has come and at the same time i started realizing myself and my teams how passionate they are when they are working how much they are involved and that involvement requires a lot of you know support and passion and uh, that uh, passion can be of many things you know uh, a support uh, an urge to grow in the in the career and to show somebody how capable you are and all these emotions as put together come as passion and uh, from there on we have not changed our motto for last 5 years now and we continue to keep this as a, a, a theme for all of us and everybody love it and uh, uh, really my team is passionate today and uh, the especially young people and uh, they love to uh, take this theme and uh, 
be compassionate themselves. Wonderful, sir. Beautiful explanation. An excellent explanation. You, The way you put it right for all of us, like I was not intelligent, but I compensated it with hard work. That's really nice. And that's a message for all of us. If at all, we don't, many of us aren't that intelligent, but again, hard work could compensate. You could rise up to that level through pure hard work and determination. I really get that point very well. And it's a beautiful concept, you know, that you put that one liner, like a passion to perform. So it's connected with emotions, as you also mentioned. Beautiful. Now, sir, I would like to know about your childhood and your early uh, youth stage. Like, were you the carefree one? Like you, you were you, you were not that serious with things or were you were very studious with studies. Did you trouble your parents when you were young as a youngster? And uh, if you ask me, no, I'm I'm a mixed one. Uh, uh, my my father is uh, uh, very passionate about children because he lost his father when he was very young, and uh, he he never uh, you know scolded me, beaten me, or anywhere. And he tried to provide whatever I ask. But still, you know, we have that fear to talk to him as an elderly person. Everything is my mother. So I, all through the proper channel. So anything I need to ask, a pen, pencil, book, anything, you know, I need to ask my mother. It doesn't mean that, you no, know, he's scary or anything. But it was like that. But over a period of time when we have grown and we have become very close to him. And uh, so uh, and he he's so caring for all of us. And... When it comes to my education, you know, I'm a mediocre. I'm not a uh, too intelligent guy and, uh, and uh, not a very low scoring uh, student. Uh, but I used to roam around with the uh, intelligent gang so that, you know, I am also branded as um, top notch of a school or anything. But one good thing is um, right from my school in high school days, I used to participate in uh, elocution competition, debate competition, quiz competition. I started from a sixth standard till my final year degree. Whichever is the competition I participated, I never never came out without winning a prize. In an electrician competition, you put it in a, any topic given, a span of uh, five minutes, you have to think about the topic and you have to deliver it. And uh, I'm good at it. So it went to a, till a university level competitions. I won it. And uh, without winning a competition, I never came out. In my final year degree, my total number of trophies were 32 with the various competitions, essay writing, debate, Hindi, English, Telugu. You name any language, I used to be there. I used to participate and get it done and quiz competitions. So that way, mm, uh, my activities are you know, very, very balanced. And in education, I'm not the top notch. And as I told you, I'm a mediocre. And uh, I love the sports. I used to play cricket. I used to play ta table tennis. And uh, my father has inspired me to play lawn tennis and badminton. So all the games, you know, I love. And uh, I, I still, uh, I used to play, play all of them. I'm a good player. Uh, any of the sport, all these sports, I used to be reasonable. Not very top, but I used to be reasonable. And especially I love cricket. So that's how the my, my childhood passed on. Of, of course, we are from a, a middle class uh, family, as I told you. But that time, uh, the uh, inspiration was, you know, how to become a clerk. Because my philosophy was a clerk. Beyond this, uh, our thoughts were not there. So that's the reason, you know, all the friends and everybody wished to attempt uh, RRB or uh, banking services or LIC. Uh, that was the thought process. After I become professional, then we started thinking it is a lot of things beyond this. But the environment was uh, such a way and your father was your role model. Your father was your hero. Naturally, you wanted to be like your hero. And uh, But I, that afterwards, we realized, you know, it's, uh, it is beyond. And from there onwards, there is, I, I, I could not stop myself. I started attempting many things. And I always used to tell people, you may be failure, but you should not fail to attempt. And uh, that's a kind of an approach when I started. And uh, then my team, my mentors helped me because many people have fear of failure when they're attempting things. And uh, I never had it. I completely used to attempt them. And of course, there are failures. And uh, I used to get the answers for them in my next venture or next thing. 
and that has helped me and one of my mentor is to tell me uh, giri be don't be cat on the wall jump one side it could be a wrong side but again jump onto the come, come back to that wall and jump to the right side and uh, that was a, a very inspiring message for me so i i don't want to be cat on the wall i jump the side which or i feel good sometimes is a success sometimes is a failure but failure was my stepping stone for my next success so as a childhood you know it was very funny and uh, to tell you also here i would like to tell you today i have around 10 childhood friends till today right from my first standard and uh, these guys are there with us and every day at least 3 4 of us we keep talking every year twice in a year we meet and uh, they are in a different fields uh, uh, different you know jobs and uh, businesses they are doing but we are still connected now not only we and their families their children and uh, to even one or two my friends even have grandchildren but still we are very very connected and still we relish enjoy our childhood days wonderful so that's a beautiful way to share your thoughts on uh, you know your with regard to your friends your connection with your friends right from first class that's really nice you shared it also well you about your schooling and your uh, connection with your dad your connection with your mom that's really nice wonderful now sir i'd like to know your thoughts with regard to freedom now when somebody is given the freedom to do something either at home or in on the professional uh, zone now how does how do you look at freedom what does freedom mean to you now freedom is an opportunity at the same time we should not miss you the freedom actually i have seen this uh, i should quote this one i should see in this uh, misuse of freedom uh or they don't understand freedom with the countries like russia when russia has disintegrated into cis countries 15 countries from a communism they came into a freedom for them freedom is doing everything initially they were confused and uh, many people are start doing the wrong things and uh, of course being a, a democratic country india we know what are the limitations of the freedom what are do's and don'ts of the freedom and uh, freedom is given for to succeed something and freedom is you know to discipline yourself and put your thoughts express your thoughts is for the freedom so i i myself say freedom is a great opportunity given uh, to all of us whether it is your your parents your career your society your but you should not misuse them and uh, you should put it in a right way and uh, exercise uh, the right fashion the freedom and prove everybody you are a person who can contribute by taking freedom and tomorrow people should not feel i have given this freedom to this guy and he misused it and actually you should respect the freedom and then you will succeed wonderful a beautiful way to put that that's really nice i was just listening carefully to what you were sharing with regard to freedom very nice now sir now we talk of gender equality now with regard to the pharmaceutical industry how many women have entered into this zone or is it only male dominated or other genders could enter this field no predominantly yes it is a male dominated but you now i'll tell you uh, nowadays uh, a lot of girls are uh, entering into this zone in my team uh, in the field as a medical representative as a product manager as an operational manager as a every uh, domain today uh, we have girls working with us and uh, they are also very passionate and uh, initially people used to think you know because especially in emerging markets we have different time zones you have to work early start early ending uh, with a lot of uh, different time zones but believe me they are the people who work passionately i have my team members and uh, any time i can call them and they call even 11 12 o'clock sometimes when i have meetings and presentations they call me and bother me sir you have received it you know have you gone through this is it okay for you and uh, sometimes i feel you know they have families and uh, 
Uh, they, they are in uh, ladies and you know they i should not disturb them but they are very very passionate and not only i'm talking about india my team members either from colombia either in dubai uh, you and you have an even brazil i have my colleagues and everybody you know they are very very passionate uh, I, in fact they push me and uh, to to the next levels and they tell me you can reach us any time and you can uh, ask me and what you uh, support or what push you want me to do they will always you know push me to do that one and but of course generally pharmaceutical industry is dominated by males but uh, in today in, in our company uh, we have taken a oath as a corporate 50 percent we wanted to put the uh, girls and women are uh, into the our company and there's a today a lot of change and we started incorporating girls and in, into our in the various departments of course since ours is a manufacturing and marketing industry naturally you know in the manufacturing side more are more male are there but today regulatory uh, quality control quality assurance and uh, research and development uh, intellectual properties today a lot of uh, girls are there who is working and we have, we have seen them today even recently we had uh, a campus selections from NIFER and other areas I'll tell you the girls the way they have uh, gone through the interviews and the way they express about the ambitions amazing and um, I see you know boys are a little behind in terms of expressing their uh, uh, ambitions but girls are very open and very open Initially, I used to have a thoughts, you know, okay, they may come into the profession afterwards, you know, uh, because of their family compulsions, they may uh, take back. I have not seen them. They were taking it forward and they were to make their careers. And um, recent my recruitments, uh, half of them are girls. Half of them are girls and uh, they are very, very passionate. That's really nice. A, a very positive one that you've shared. That's wonderful. So the entire world has really understood the meaning of life to give space to all the genders and to respect one another in the professional field. That's really nice. Now, sir, I'd like to ask you the next question, which is concerned with criticism. When we do good work or when we do any work, it can be. <laughs> now, let me put it like this. When we do our work on the professional space, there are some people who will criticize us. We might have done our very best, given up 200 percent, but still there are some people who will criticize us. So how do you take criticism if you've ever faced that? How did you manage the critical uh, you know, comments or the critical feedback from your superiors or maybe inferiors or your peers as well? I'm actually, I'm very fortunate. Uh, I've been uh, critically observed and critical comments were given to me. But uh, none of my superiors or mentors never criticized me personally. But they, it was very positive criticism. And they are very critical about uh, some of the um, approaches which I made. That has helped me. And uh, th that is, you know, the cr criticism is required in a positive way. And, uh, but of course, you should not, when you are criticizing, you should not criticize people personally. And you should make a balance or you should make a demarcation of you know, criticism of the work profession. And uh, I have faced many people who are very critical and uh, they used to tell uh, what they feel about it. And uh, after some time, I also started making myself and very clear about personal and professional. I used to be very critical when it comes to pro uh, profession. But when I move out of my cabin, I'm very friendly with my team members. That's the reason sometimes my team used to get confused. This guy was critical, very critical for your two minutes back. And when again, after some time, you know, he's uh, a different person. I used to tell them, that's what you need to have separation, profession and personal. And then they started respecting. They started respecting my thoughts. So then they started feeling it is not personal, it is professional. And uh, I don't want it to mince words. Initially, I used to do that. I used to keep certain things under carpet. But afterwards, I realized there's no point. And uh, you should be upfront. So initially, people may feel it is a criticism. 
I, they may say it is a, a very upfront uh, uh, thoughts which I have shared with them. But let they start realizing is very clear. There is no mincing words. And uh, I always tell even my team members. I used to tell them, you can be very critical with me if I don't. If you don't like certain of my approaches, you should be critical and telling me what is good, what is wrong. And few people are very, very upfront. They used to tell me. They used to give feedback, sir. It is like this. You would have been done like this. It has helped me to shape myself. I always look not only to my superiors. Even I always look towards my team members to give that critical remarks. to shape myself so criticism is required and very professional yes sir thank you so much for sharing that thank you very much you're very frank about it you said when i'm in the office you no know, i'm like you know i'm when i'm at work so i'm a bit critical you know i just want everything in order i want everything to go as planned but once i'm off the cabin or off my office like you know of the office hours i'm very friendly i'm very warm so people like i've understood it finally that work is work and play is play yes that's wonderful now sir you come across as a wonderful family person as well you've mentioned that you had a, you have a very caring spouse now i would like you to give a message to the youngsters now because you've been traveling to several countries your your profession requires a lot of traveling you love traveling as well as you earlier mentioned that that keeps you you know more energetic and more alert and happier so i think at home there should be a lot of adjustment from your family members especially your spouse so what how did you balance it how did you convince her and how you've managed everything till date so you want me to relieve some secrets of course i do <laughs> i do that and uh, of course uh, my wife uh, madhuri and uh, very caring and she's very good cook and uh, she take care of me and uh, uh of course my travel is extensive uh one thing i do is uh, i report to her in the morning and evening wherever i am in the sense uh, when once i reach the place i tell her i reached so that makes me also happy and that makes her also very comfortable and um, second is my my elder uh, son lalit uh, he is a, a pharmacy graduate he is done his m pharm and he is working in a pharmacovigilance uh and my younger uh, son is sai pranay he is in canada he is done an mba and uh, lovely kids and uh, we are very playful my mother is very strict i am not um, very strict i used to be you know supportive to them and uh, i enjoy working with them talking to them sharing the ideas and uh, but uh, when it balancing the life the moment i come back from any tour or anything i try to bring few gifts to my my wife and this thing so that they don't miss me number one number two is um, now i always you uh, know uh, make sure that i take them out for you know, whenever i am there in hyderabad we go out on saturday sundays and spend some time with them and uh, in a year i go with, the, with them to pilgrimage whether it is tirupati shirdi and recently i was there at the varanasi and uh, i was in puri madurai uh so uh, with my wife and uh, uh, previously before covid i used to travel with my my family i had been to colombo malaysia i was in dubai expo i take them once in a year uh, so that they also see and of course my family stayed with me in moscow and uh, they know russia they know they have stayed at least 2 3 years with me and they have seen the flavor of uh, staying outside india and uh, but still they complain to me that i have not shown them st petersburg and uh, one of the uh, one lovely place and uh, then i i i keep telling my wife you know we'll go one more time sometime so the balance is more about you know uh spending some quality time with them when we are back but still today when i'm in in india still i come back very late by the time i come back it is almost 9 o'clock night i leave at 8 o'clock in the morning uh because of my time zone working uh, i need to spare that time but when and say come back i used to make that balance with uh, my family yes thank you for sharing all those wonderful tips thank you so much many of them could apply them in their lives as well yes you know keeping your family informed about your whereabouts if you have reached or not reached you know, it makes us feel good and uh, it makes us feel comfortable it comforts us 
and you know you feel that positivity yes that everything is fine and so you, your whole day goes well again before you go to bed you get a message that yes i'm fine that's really nice and gifts as well that's also a beautiful way of saying that you love your family yes dear that's nice now so what if there are the other youngsters out who want to join in as the new medical reps now they want to enter into this field uh, do you think there is growth in this field, a very quick growth, or it takes a very long time? So what is the message for the youth from you with your experience? Actually, the pharmaceutical industry is the one industry you have seen in COVID time, the importance of this industry. And uh, we, I have always tell, you know, two industries are going to survive whatever happens, food and pharmaceutical. And other industries are, you know, uh, is volatile. In the cosmetics, if you have uh, good income, you buy, and if you don't have income, it will come down. But these two industries are evergreen industries because uh, your living and health are most important. And today, the pharmaceutical industry is growing, uh, especially in India. We are called as pharmacy of the world because today India is gaining momentum in this industry as a manufacturer or as a, as a marketing uh, company or a generic companies are there. And we have become uh, one of the biggest uh, industry today for uh, India. And today, even youngsters who are coming into this industry, whether it is a technical side or a marketing side, it has increased tremendously. And uh, they also, everybody realized this is one industry where uh, they can shape up their career. And uh, again, here you have different sectors, uh, manufacturing, marketing, quality, regulatory, uh, R and D. So you have different departments, and today the lot of institutions. If you previously, if you look at the pharmacies colleges in different states, used to be very very small. But if today any engineering college is definitely associated with the pharmacy college, and uh, that shows that people who are interested to study pharmacy, and uh, that shows the people who wanted to enter into this industry. And today we have national institutes like NIPER, and they started all the branches in Hyderabad, Mohali, uh, then in, in many of the places they started the national institutes, and that is also shaping up. And also people with the chemistry backgrounds. And again, that's again the industry which it absorbs them. And today even people with the diploma in pharmacy, de-pharmacy, and uh, they are also getting into the industry. So the industry is expanding exploding and is one is one i will suggest you know people who wanted to uh, come into the pharmaceutical industry is a wonderful industry and uh, you will get a fulfilling experience and you feel that you no know, yes i am working in a healthcare profession and earlier people used to join in the industry when they don't become doctor the next choice is to become a pharmacist and uh, that used to be not by choice but today it has become by choice. It has become a chosen profession for all the people. So that's the reason people are more ambitious, more goal oriented. They know what they want to do. They know where they want to reach. It's very clear for all of them. So this industry is growing. And um, but initially, when you look at the entry point level, people may not get the very big salaries. But today there is a vacuum of a professional uh, people in this industry. Once you become professional, you are on demand. And, and today you can grow exponentially and uh, whether it is a career, you can make money. And, uh, and today the industry is growing and you know, cities like Hyderabad today, first is information technology, second is pharma industry. Two industries are known in Hyderabad. Uh, today, Hyderabad is one of the biggest pharmaceutical industry place. Uh, for, of course, in Ahmedabad, uh, Mumbai, and but Hyderabad today is a prominent. This all because people want to work in the industry. And I, I, I suggest to the young people, if you want to make a career, this is one of the industry where you can look at. Yes, sir. That's really nice. Thank you so much for sharing. Now, sir, is it only the youngsters who can join or people of any age group can enter into this field? 
any age group you know sometimes you know uh, they may lose uh, their experience but uh, few can few areas where uh, other uh, professionals will come in especially engineering uh, hr uh, where you need people from different industry and even project managements they come in but when it comes to technical side naturally people with an experience enter into this but is kind of a non technical whether it is a marketing uh, hr project management um, kind of portfolio management there are certain in, uh, certain areas are there where people are coming from other industries and they can uh, use their experience of other industry in pharmaceutical industry that is possible that's really nice that's wonderful sir now sir towards the end of the session i'd like you to share with us three powerful words like you been is it passion and performance or is it something else that you'd like to give us as a gift towards the end what are the three beautiful words that could you know come out from your thought process as a gift for us apart from please sorry and thank you what could you give as a gift so uh, passion to perform is a very very important passion is very important commitment and uh, you should be uh, doing everything with a passion uh, but as i told you you may be failure but you should not fail to attempt attempt is most important thing in your life and uh, don't have fear of failure because success will come when there are the steps of failure and uh, climb on them attempt it and uh, be passionate whatever you are doing and uh, sometimes you should be very patient enough to hold on to your positions and uh, don't you know uh, go away from uh, whatever the difficult situation comes face it approach them and you will find solutions yes thank you so much thank you so much sir for your time so it is performance passion patience commitment attempt you know even if you fail it's okay but at least try to attempt give it a try and that's how you become successful if you don't try you will not know that you're going to succeed or going to fail you're just there like you know the cat on the wall so either you jump the right side or the left side but do something and if you don't like it over there you can always come back to the other side thank you so much so you really enlightened us in the right way we look forward to many more interactions with you we'd love you to share your time once more on the international fab talks to enlighten us there are several other questions that we have for you and we expect the answers uh, right out from your thought process thank you very much thank you so much thank you thank you very much thank you very much sir thank you my dear friends with this we come to an end to the international fab talks for today if you like what we are doing stay connected with us like comment subscribe and share and of course if you'd like to be just like our celebrity and guest you could take this life example for yourself you know don't be a cat on the wall either you select the right side or the left side and do something in life and of course sir said the pharmaceutical industry is a vast one and it survives to all situations for example it survived the covid situation stay safe and stay blessed don't forget to love your family because if you have a happy family you can just do anything in the world the support from the family stay safe love yourself respect others and the way sir said respect the cultures of other countries but at the same time be within your limits do not cross boundaries too much stay safe thank you sir thank you very much.